All right, page three of our 13.1.13.2 problem set. So not only do we use rectangular coordinates to describe a vector and its components, we also use trigonometry. So let's try a problem here. Um, let's say I have a vector here, and I'm going to call it vector A. And it makes a 60 degree angle with the horizontal. In other words, that's its reference angle. And I'm going to say its length is 7. So magnitude 7. And it makes an angle of 60 degrees with the horizontal. So how would I come up with the components of A? Well, I have to think about what is this length here and what is this length here. So that length would be I and that length would be J. So if I remember my trigonometry, this is what I'm going to think. And I'm going to remember x equals r cosine theta because all I really want to do is no x here. And y equals r sine theta. Again, that's trigonometry. If then I want to write the components, my i component will be r, which in this case is going to be the magnitude of a. So 7 cosine of 60 degrees plus 7 sine of 60 degrees. Oops, I got to put my vectors in there. So in here I need to make sure I have i. So now make sure you have your i and j components and make sure that you have your cosines and sines in the right spot. So if I continue this, 7, let's see, cosine of 60 is 1 half. And then the sine of 60 is square root of 3 over 2. So if I was going to simplify that, I would write it as 7 over 2i and 7 square root of 3 over 2j. Again, getting in the habit of doing things exactly. Stop with the decimals. Okay. Now, one thing you do have to remember when you're going to use this method is what quadrant you're in. If you utilize this with reference angles, in other words, what angle your vector always makes with the horizontal, just pay attention to the signs by the quadrant. So in other words, if you're in quadrant 2, that means the x component has to be negative if you're using acute angles for theta. If you're in quadrant 3, both x and y are negative. If you're in quadrant 4, only y is negative. So you can remember your trig that way, or you can actually use the angle that you have from here all the way over to where your terminal side is. I like reference angles, acute angles, but it doesn't matter. Just I guess the key here is pay attention to signs if you're moving around outside of one, uh, quadrant one. Okay, now let's do adding and subtracting vectors algebraically. This is kind of fun. I always think of adding vectors geometrically as like moving something around a room. So I'm going to start with the vector 2i minus 3j in my plane here. So I mean you can a vector is the same no matter where you set it. So I'm going to start here and I'm going to go 2i, so 1, 2, and minus 3j, 1, 2, 3. I'm use a different color here, it might help. So 2i minus 3j. So I'm going to connect the from and the to. So that vector there is vector v. Now if I want to add vector w to vector v, I start where I end it. So v displacement is first, then w displacement is next. So I've shown, think about this guy as you're starting. I start and end with v, and then I'm going to start with w. So I go 1i from the tip. I go 1i and 5j. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and here. So my w vector looks just like this. So again, I let's say I have a um, box that I'm moving. So I start the box here, I push it here, and then w gives me another direction and length I have to travel. So now my box is here. And if I want to talk about the total displacement of the box from beginning to end, then I would say, okay, where did I start? 
and where did I finish? So then that vector there would be V plus W. V plus W. And so they say here tip to tail. Why do we do that? Because we're talking about displacement. I'm displacing the box here to here, and then I take the tail of W and place it at the tip of V to do the second part of the displacement. And then the total displacement change, as if I didn't go through that path, that's going to be the sum of my angle. All right, now subtraction, I have, there are different ways of doing subtraction, and you know, you're Teachers may have taught you different things. I don't, I don't know, but let's see. What I would do here is kind of think of this in terms of adding a negative kind of thing. So if I'm going to draw V minus W, I'm going to do V plus negative W. So that now it becomes a sum of angles and or sum of vectors instead of negative vectors. But I have to think about drawing negative W instead of W from the tip of V. So let's start again. I'm going to do 2i minus 3j and then i plus 5j. But then I have to remember that w or negative w is going to be minus i minus 5j. Remember earlier we talked about when you negate a vector, it just turns it around 180 degrees. So I have to think, let's put v up here. So 2i minus 3j, so here's v, first displacement, and then I want to do minus w, so here, I'll start with a different pen, I'm going to go minus, start here, minus i, minus 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, so minus i takes me to the left, minus 5j takes me down, so that means that minus w will be right here. Not very straight, but it starts here and ends right here. Now, if I want the displacement, so now I've displaced something, a box here, moved it here, and then minus W tells me I have to move it here. So then total displacement is the direction from where I started to where I ended. So that right there is going to be V plus negative W. Sorry, my vector isn't very straight. I apologize. Should I get out a ruler and do it again? Oh, look, I happen to have a ruler. Should have brought this out earlier, huh? All right, here we go. <laughs> I don't know. I think I'm making it look worse. Nevertheless, there you go. Now we're going to add and subtract vectors algebraically. And basically, you add like components. You're going to find this pretty straightforward, ladies and gentlemen. So if I'm going to add, let's see, V is equal to 2i minus 3j. And W was given to us as i plus 5j. So if I want to add them, V plus W, I take V and add it to W. You can subtract it too. Just make sure you watch your signs. Now I'm going to take the i's and put them together and take the J's and put them together. Factor out the I's. You don't have to do this factoring out, but it does help you understand what's happening here. And then you add. So I have 3I plus 2J. Now let's think about this. 3I plus 2J, and I look at my vector up here. Is that 3i plus 2j? It is. So 3i plus 2j. It's a good way to check. I can do it geometrically and get the same thing that I get algebraically. And um, adding and subtracting vectors algebraically works in three space just fine. Um, and so does adding and subtracting vectors, but geometrically, but in three space, it's actually really challenging to draw it. So we just stick with the components.